In this video, I will break down why Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard will mark the end of gaming as we know it. In early October, it was announced that after months of deliberation with regulators over the terms of the deal, Microsoft had agreed a final set of terms for their $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. The deal was initially stalled due to fears raised by regulators such as the CMA that the existing terms would enable Microsoft to monopolize cloud gaming. Activision Blizzard already had a virtual monopoly in their space, with Series like Call of Duty, Overwatch and Candy Crush functioning as virtually unchallenged masters of their genres. And many were concerned that if this genre dominance was combined with Game Pass exclusivity, gaming would become just another Microsoft subscription service. In response to these fears, Microsoft offered a round of concessions that according to them and the regulators who eventually approved these terms, preserve competitiveness within the gaming. These concessions, which include a 15 year deal with Ubisoft, prevent some of Activision's titles from being offered exclusively on Microsoft's Xbox cloud gaming service for a 15 year period. However, I believe that in the long run, these so-called concessions by Microsoft more so resemble a retreat by regulators and will do little to prevent fundamental changes to the game industry as we know it. That's not how it works. You're supposed to resist. Not if I don't want to. Much has been said about the exclusion of popular mobile titles like Candy Crush and Call of Duty Mobile from the 15 year timeline, but this is a channel for real men, both male and female. So I'm not gonna go into Candy Crush. We keep it gangster hair, just like Drake. But I will focus on the very concerning implications of this deal for the future of console and PC gaming. To do this, I will have to go into a condensed history of Microsoft's business practices, starting with its pioneering leader, Mr. Epstein Island himself, Bill Gates. Hello. I'm Bill Gates. Bill Gates is an interesting lad. He might seem like a retired geography teacher who collects trains in his spare time, but Bill Gates is anything but a worn down old man. Underneath that wall visage lies a vicious and competitive business mind, fueled by an even greater ego. And this spirit of Bill Gates is embodied in Microsoft. You see, unlike Jobs, Wozniak, Zuckerberg, so on and so forth, Gates built Microsoft on the back of shrewd business tactics, not by designing innovative product offering. His main skill was his ability to spot great opportunities develop these IP and block off competitors. In the early period of Microsoft, he would follow a clear two-stage business philosophy. Spot innovative IP elsewhere that had been neglected or underutilized, and then form a software monopoly by constructing commercial models that forced the customer into a dependency on the software, such that the barrier of entry to competitors becomes absurdly high. Usually he would achieve this by consolidating the software into a subscription service. Think of Microsoft Office or Windows, you get the point. Now I'm sure at this point you might be starting to realize why I've gone on this tangent. Well it's because the playbook Microsoft built Windows on is the same playbook they are using to consolidate the control of gaming. And this is my main concern. I fear that Microsoft will take over the main developers in their respective industries through sheer buying power and increasingly shift their IP from relatively open marketplaces to the Microsoft exclusive Game Pass platform. I'm sure many of you guys are thinking, didn't Sony try to do this already? Has exclusivity really impacted gaming? In fact, there's plenty of evidence to the contrary, great titles have sprung from exclusivity. However, I don't think things are this simple. Sony's strategy was very different from the beginning and its effects have been similarly distinct. You see, unlike Xbox, Sony's strategy was based on buying expertise, not IP, and their objective was to sell PlayStations, not to control the overall software market. We can see this with the creation of one of their biggest IPs, the Horizon series. The success of the series, beginning with 2017's Horizon Zero Dawn, was not a foregone conclusion, or even an expected one. Guerrilla Games, the publisher of the series, were not a big name developer like Activision Blizzard or Bethesda. In fact, the years before the release of Horizon Zero Dawn, they were in the gaming wilderness. Guerrilla only had one recognizable IP, the Killzone series, and the last game in this saga, 2013's Killzone Shadow Form, was only a moderate commercial success, selling 2 million copies. And this is important to emphasize, prior to Horizon, Guerrilla Games had no record of massive commercial success. So when Horizon Zero Dawn came out, to tremendous commercial and critical acclaim, it was a change in form. Sony didn't buy Horizon Zero Dawn and prevent pre-existing fans from experiencing elsewhere, they simply used their financial clout to invest in new IP that paid them dividends 10 times over. Whereas Microsoft have aimed at much bigger and much safer targets. 
targets. Rather than focusing on developing new IP to attract gamers, they have gone for the big guns, buying popular franchises and holding their IP hostage to force gamers to buy an Xbox and eventually commit to the Game Pass. On the top of my head, I can't think of any big name titles that have been released under Microsoft's control that would not have been made without the acquisition. The next Call of Duty series would have been made without Microsoft and Starfield, not to mention ESO 6 when it eventually comes out, would have released without any of the Microsoft financial clout. And this is what I'm trying to point out. The takeover represents a threat because Microsoft are not trying to develop new IP to sell consoles. They're trying to conquer the game industry by seizure itself through forcing gamers to use the Game Pass. I've already established the many dire consequences of this strategy for gaming, but in my opinion the most frightening consequence of the Game Pass predominance is the effect this monopoly will have on the ability of small to medium sized competitors to compete with the big dogs. In the worst case scenario, Microsoft migrates their future titles completely away from more neutral platforms like Steam to the Game Pass. And in doing so forces gamers and developers in tow to focus on the Game Pass. At this point, there will be nothing stopping Microsoft from actively promoting their IP above smaller and mid-sized competitors. This will largely not affect the big competitors, I'll be honest, who will, following the Ubisoft and EA model, most likely develop their own platforms. But it will impede on the ability of smaller studios to promote their new titles. Imagine for a second if Larian were impeded by Steam when they were trying to kickstart the Definity series. We may have never seen Baldur's Gate 3 come to light. And the only way you can prevent this future is to like and subscribe for more insightful and moderately comedic content.